So the Uniswap exchange and Uni token has been really hot lately. And in this deep dive video, I'm gonna cover the exchange, the token, and everything else you need to know in a very easily digestible manner. Now, before we begin, just a few quick notes. If you like this video at any time, please subscribe to catch future deep dive content in the Bitcoin and crypto space. Also, I left timestamps down below for your viewing pleasure and a special offer in our pinned comment, so check that out. And without further ado, sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. All right, so Uniswap is one of the most popular decentralized exchanges or DEXs, and it has really raised these to the next level of adoption, even on par with centralized exchanges, which is quite a feat. You can trade tokens in a non-custodial manner, and they are much more decentralized than Ether, Delta, or IDEX ever were. So you may be wondering, how did this happen when just a few years ago, there were so many roadblocks preventing DEXs from getting mainstream adoption. One unique way that they're different from centralized exchanges and other DEXs too, is that they utilize liquidity pools with an automated market maker protocol to execute trades. And we'll touch on this a little bit shortly. They've been in operation since 2018 and in September of 2020, just a month or two ago, they had a remarkable launch of their own token, UNI or UNI, that we'll take a look at as well. Like we mentioned, it's a super popular DEX and it had more trading volume than Coinbase Pro, which is so impressive for a DEX if you think about it. If you've been in the crypto space for a long time, you'll know how big of an achievement that is. Especially since liquidity was a huge problem for DEXs not so long ago. Some reasons for popularity include, you can hold full custody of your funds, no KYC required, the hottest new ICOs and IEOs list on Uniswap first, and they have much better UI UX than previous DEXs. Some things to be mindful of. First, transactions can fail and you'll lose the gas fee you paid, and that could be quite a bit, especially if it's in times of heavy usage. You have to accept the risk of more slippage. On a very high level, that means the price not staying at the price you see, but also dropping away from where you want it to go because of not a lot of liquidity, for example. That's not ideal for large orders at once. When there's limited liquidity for certain token pairs, you should place them at incremental orders. And also watch out for fake coins because it is decentralized. There are a lot of scammers looking to take advantage by naming coins, things close to what you're expecting, but it's their own coin that's worthless and not the one that you're trying to get. And so there are some things you can do to avoid common pitfalls like accept the higher slippage. Number two is set your gas price higher to outcompete others that are trying to get the same transactions as you. And there's a lot of scam tokens because any coin and token can be added onto Uniswap. So go look at CoinGecko, for example, and check the contract address on Etherscan. So those are some ways to make sure you're looking at the right token and not some other one that some random person spun up in their basement. Now, diving a little bit further into the specifics of Uniswap Exchange, there's no listing process, it's permissionless, so there's no gatekeeper. But to keep things more usable and have some filtering of these worthless projects, different listings like CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko can integrate their token lists with certain standards onto Uniswap. So you can see the vetted tokens in these lists per se. There's also no order book, no limit orders, no stop loss. There's only instant swaps, right? That's what's unique. They're keeping it simple. None of those advanced functionalities that you expect in regular exchanges yet. There's also no charts because it's only like they show you the trade that you would get at that moment, but you could integrate external tools like DEX tools and I'll link that link down in the description below as well. Perhaps in the future, more advanced capabilities like the ones we mentioned might be added, but for now, they are not inherently features of token swap type exchanges like this. Some more things to just a mental note of. One is that centralized exchanges fees, but how Uniswap is different is that they pay a part of the fees to the liquidity providers. Some risks are that just like any smart contract, there's always a risk of bugs, vulnerabilities, that could lead to hacks or malfunctions. 
although no third party risk, like they can't exit scam like Quadriga did with your crypto, there's still a technological risk involved in this platform. So don't put too much eggs into one basket or in this case, one platform. It is the best performing DEX and even the best performing DAP in all of DeFi. Number one in terms of lock capital with over 2 billion, 20% dominance in all of DeFi, roughly 45% of all decentralized exchanges, and it has more than 100 DeFi integrations onto this platform. Now, let's look a little bit more at the different types of ecosystem participants, and there are four. One is liquidity providers, and these can be passive token holders that want to accumulate fees. It could be professional market makers. It could be token projects that want to provide extra liquidity for the token. And it could be DeFi pioneers that experiment with different yield farming strategies per se. There's also your traders, the number two, speculators that want to buy and sell tokens through swapping, arbitrage bots, DAP users that buy tokens to use elsewhere, and smart contracts that execute trades for functionality like DEX aggregators per se. Number three is your developers and projects. These are the front end and UX builders for access to Uniswap, like the DeFi dashboards, for example. Maybe people who want to integrate the swap function into their wallets. DEX aggregators could connect to Uniswap as well. And smart contract developers can use from their suite of functions to build their own DeFi tools. And lastly, but not least, number four in terms of participants is just the team, the community, and the uni token holders that drive development of the protocol and the ecosystem. Now, I mentioned liquidity pools as a unique and crucial component of Uniswap. Now, this is the amount of tokens that are locked into smart contract. It's used to facilitate trading and provide liquidity for DEXs, these liquidity pools. Banker and Kyber were the first to utilize this, but Uniswap made it more popular. Also, automated market making is very important in DEXs because it touches on a key component and hurdle for previous DEXs. You can't have low liquidity or volume or else no one can use it, right? So if no one is in the order book is willing to meet the price, then market makers have to be willing to buy and sell an asset to provide liquidity. In centralized exchanges, this function of market making is not open to everyone. This can be done in decentralized exchanges with liquidity pool providers. Here is just a great diagram we got from uniswap.org about roughly how these Uniswap pools work and where the liquidity provider sits in the whole flow and where the trader sits on the other side when they access the pool through the Uniswap interface. So I kind of touched on this a little bit already, but each pool contains the two tokens. For example, for DAI slash ETH pair, it has both DAI in the pool and ETH. There's just this liquidity pool. That's all that's needed to make this function. If you provide tokens, you get LP tokens back that represent your share or your proportion of ownership of the pool. Then the pool fee is proportionally distributed back to the token holders. Very easy, right? And you can enter and exit pools at any time, but on exiting, the LP tokens will be burnt. You may ask, how is the price determined, right? Basically, the ratio between the two tokens and the pool determines the price. And there's a pretty special algorithm that does this. With a larger pool, orders impact the price less. Just keep that in mind. And Uniswap has one of the simplest liquidity pool concepts and algorithms out there. And they're an innovator in this space. Now, some of the normal risks for DeFi participants, including these LPs or liquidity providers, bugs, admin key problems, and systemic risks. And specifically for participating in liquidity pools, some risks include impermanent loss, which you can Google more on that. But essentially it is that you can stay profitable when the price stays within a certain range for the trading pair. Big directional moves outside of that range can lead to less opportunity costs and it actually you would be operating in the negative as a LP. Also liquidity pool hacks is another risk, but Uniswap fortunately has not been hacked yet. Now, if we look at the history of Uniswap, there's V1 and V2. V1 came in 2018 as a proof of concept and it's still out there, right? It still coexists with V2, but V2 has some improvements. V1, they have no platform token, no platform fee, only the liquidity provider fee, in which is 0.3% goes to each liquidity pool. Version two also has 0.3% fee, but has a 0.05% protocol fee for sustained development of the protocol. And the 0.25% goes to the liquidity pool fee. 
Now in version one, you could switch between ERC20 tokens and Ethereum directly. For version two, you have to use WETH or WETH, wrapped ETH, which is an ERC20 token that represents Ether. And in V1, you can trade between ERC20 and ETH pairs only. In V2, you can trade between ERC20 and ERC20 directly. V2 has a price oracle function for more decentralization and more manipulation resistance in terms of their on-chain price feeds. And also just better technical improvements and bug fixes. Sometimes the price on V1 is more optional, sometimes V2. So if you really want to go shopping for the best price, then go check out both of them. Now for the exciting part, the uni token that I got some of on the airdrop, did you? Anyways, the purpose is to quote, shared community ownership and a vibrant, diverse, and dedicated governance system, which will actively guide the protocol towards the future. They have 1 billion tokens minted at Genesis to become accessible over a four year span. 21.5% for team members and employees with a vesting schedule, 18% for investors with a vesting schedule, perpetual 2% inflation starting after the four years, which will favor active holders at the cost of passive holders. 60% of Genesis will be allocated to community members and 25% of that already distributed to previous users of Uniswap per a September 1st snapshot. So of that portion of community members, some goes to liquidity providers, some go to the historical users, which are about 250,000 of us. And it's also awesome because Uni was listed on major exchanges almost immediately after launch. And then some of it will be held in the governance treasury for grants, initiatives, and so forth. And then lastly is a liquidity mining initial program for incentivizing LPs to partake. Now, what is it about the Uni token that is interesting, right? Basically, they control a lot of things. Governance of Uniswap, the treasury, the protocol fee switching, the FENS, and the Uniswap default list, which you can see at tokens.uniswap.eth. Token holders can also delegate their votes. And essentially, the Uniswap team wants this to be super decentralized, right? So they won't have involvement with protocol development, auditing, and other measures, and they won't participate directly with governance for the foreseeable future. Although they may delegate some votes to the protocol delegates without seeking to influence decisions. And they're doing all this to keep the functioning decentralized and avoid government crackdowns, potentially. They have no KYC, no jurisdiction limitations, and upholding the law as the users and the community's own responsibility. Since the token launch and the listing, there was a decent rally in price action, but most of that has been given back to the market and the price has relatively stabilized so far. Now, whew, that was a good one, but I hope this was useful and answered a lot of the questions in your mind that other videos, articles, or posts about Uniswap didn't quite answer for you. Anyways, my final thoughts, this is truly awesome innovation and the addition of liquidity pools is brilliant in the crypto space. So bravo to them. The flipping of DEXs and centralized exchanges is coming much closer. Centralized exchanges like Binance, Coinbase, Gemini, they better be worried. And Uniswap's popularity will see similar competitors pop up all over the place. Now the Uni token, I'm not as big on. I do hold mine from the airdrop. But it's mainly for governance, right? And for speculation, of course, is why we're holding it right now. But they don't have staking. They don't have income generating activities per se. So it's not necessarily going to be coordinated with higher demand for the exchange to mean higher price action, right? And as Uniswap becomes more and more popular, this just shows us how necessary it is to get ETH 2.0 out because gas fees and transactions got clogged as Uniswap's usage rise a lot in the past few months. And it also has opened a lot of interesting things like enable yield farming for liquidity pools by becoming an LP. And that could be a whole nother topic. So I'm not gonna dive into what yield farming really is. Yeah, just keep in mind, Uni token, good for speculation, but doesn't have intrinsic things built into it. Like token burns, they have perpetual inflation, there's no staking. And so it might be less interesting than other tokens and coins with built in appreciation processes, right? But anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them down below. As always, you can subscribe us by smashing the like button. Subscribe to see future deep dive videos like this if you found it interesting or helpful at all. I'm Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you all next time.